In many games involving dice, you might care about rolling a particular total. And as you probably know intuitively, there are some totals that are more likely than others. With two dice, for example, rolling a 12 isn't particularly likely. There's only one way to do it, two sixes. Rolling a 7 is much more likely. There's lots of ways that might come about. Here, we might ask a general question that lets us precisely figure out these sorts of values. Given n dice, each with sides from 1 to 6, how many different ways can we roll a total of m? With n equal to 2 and m equal to 7, for instance, we can pretty easily calculate that there are 6 ways to make a total of 7 with 2 dice. With n equal to 2 and m equal to 12, we might find that there's only one way. So with 2 dice, rolling a 7 is 6 times more likely than rolling a 12. It's not too challenging to work this out with just two dice, though. What we're interested in today is finding a general algorithm for computing the number of ways to roll a particular total, no matter how many dice there are, and no matter what the total. For instance, if we had 10 dice, how many ways are there to roll a total of 28? Whenever we're given a problem like this, it can be helpful to start with the most obvious solution. In this case, if we want to know how many ways there are to roll 10 dice and get a total of 28, we can list out all of the ways to roll 10 dice and just count how many of them total the 28. This is a correct solution to the problem. But, and hopefully you felt this way when you heard it, it's not a particularly efficient solution. It'll be perfectly fine when we're working with two dice, where there are only 36 possible ways to roll them. 36 here being 6, the number of possible rolls, raised to the power of 2, the number of dice. But with 10 dice, the total number of possible rolls is 6 raised to the power of 10, which turns out to be more than 60 million. That's far too many for a human to go through in any reasonable amount of time. And while a modern computer could probably make it through all of those possibilities in under a minute, if we consider asking questions about rolling 20 dice or 30 dice, it's going to be too much even for a computer. So we need to find a better way. Another common strategy for designing algorithms is to think about those algorithms recursively. That is to say, solving our big problem by breaking it down into similar, smaller problems. Remember that we are trying to figure out how many ways we can use n dice to roll a total of m. So let's start with the easiest problems of this form, where n is equal to 1, meaning we only roll one die. In these cases, the problem is pretty easy. For all values of m from 1 to 6, there's exactly one way to roll that value. For all other values of m, the answer is 0. There's no way using one die to get any total other than a value from 1 through 6. So now, let's try to answer a slightly bigger question. How many ways are there to use two dice to roll a total of, let's say, eight? Well, a total from two rolls can be thought of as the result of one roll with a second roll added to it. And that second roll must be a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So for the overall total to be an eight, then the first roll must be a 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, or 2, respectively. How many ways are there for that to happen? Well, we know that for one die, a 7 is impossible. And we also know there's exactly one way for one die to roll a 6, 5, 4, 3, or 2. So the sum of all of these values, 5, is the number of ways we can roll an 8 with two dice. Maybe it seems like we're overcomplicating a pretty simple problem. And if you're thinking that, you're right, for this small case at least. But sometimes precisely describing the solution to an easier problem helps in formulating a more general solution. In this case, we can generalize and say that for n dice to roll a total of m, then the first n minus 1 dice must roll a total of m minus 1, m minus 2, m minus 3, m minus 4, m minus 5, or m minus 6. Adding up each of those six values will therefore give us the answer we want. This gives us a recursive algorithm for calculating the answer to our question. To roll a total of 28 with 10 dice, 
the total of the first nine dice must be a 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, or 22. And how do we calculate how many ways there are to roll a 27 with nine dice, for example? Well, that's the sum of the number of ways to use eight dice to roll a 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, or 21. And we can keep repeating this process until we get to what we call our base case, a single die, where we know what the answer is going to be. But taking a look at the number of times we'll need to repeat this process, it seems that this strategy is pretty inefficient too. In fact, this recursive algorithm right now is really no better than our original strategy of listing out all of the possible roles. We still end up considering every possible role, doing exponentially more work as the number of dice increases. But if you look carefully at the process for performing these computations, you'll notice something interesting. There's a lot of repeated work. Here, we need to calculate how to make a 24 with 8 dice. And here, we calculate the same thing. And here, we calculate the same thing again. After we've calculated that result once, though, there's no reason to do it again and again and again. If only we had saved the result of the calculation the first time, filing it away somewhere organized, where we could easily access it again later, we could then reuse the result of the calculation every time we need it again. And this is where the efficiency will come from. We just need some space to store these results that we can reuse. We can use a big table, a lookup table, as it's often called, where we'll store the results of each calculation. This lookup table has one row for each number of dice, from 1 up to our goal of 10, and it has one column for each possible total, from 1 up to our goal of 28. We can start by filling in the first row of this lookup table, which represents all possible sums with just rolling a single die. We know that for sums of 1 through 6, there's exactly one way to do that, and for all other values, there's zero ways to do that. Now, we fill in the next row, representing all possible sums with two dice. To calculate each of these, we just need to add six values from the previous row. And for the third row, all possible sums with three dice, each value is obtained by adding six values from the second row. For example, the number of ways to use three dice and achieve a total of ten is the sum of the number of ways to use two dice and get a total of 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, or 4. Getting a total of 4 with 3 dice, meanwhile, requires getting a total of 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, or negative 2 with 2 dice. Of course, getting any total that's 0 or negative is impossible, so we can effectively throw those possibilities away and only consider the other ones. If we keep repeating this process, Filling in these rows one at a time will eventually fill out the last row and figure out how many ways there are to achieve a total of 28 with 10 dice. And we did so by just doing one calculation for each of the cells in this table. It might seem like a lot, but it's much, much fewer than the more than 60 million possible die rolls that we might have gone through otherwise. This then is the principle behind what's called dynamic programming. By formulating a problem recursively, that is to say, defining a problem in terms of smaller versions of the same problem, and then using a lookup table to save the results of calculations we've already done, we can often dramatically speed up these algorithms. And these kinds of techniques are broadly applicable. It's not just about rolling dice. It's about recognizing that we can both solve new problems and remember solutions to old ones and recognizing that by remembering what we've already done, we enable ourselves to more easily and more efficiently solve bigger, more challenging problems as a result.